All right, tonight what I'm going to do is try to adjust this uh, mechanical overspeed switch so that it activates and hits this stud, and which will ground out the uh, ignition, although I don't have the wire on. I'm just trying to get the adjustment when this generator reaches about 74 hertz, okay? Uh, right now, obviously, everything is off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the generator up, and the way I'm going to control the speed is by using the idle set screw, okay? Just right down here. This is going to be kind of hard to do it uh, while holding the camera and all. So I'm going to increase the speed little by little. I'm going to focus the camera on this as well as the hertz meter. When I first start up, it's going to be about 61 hertz, which is normal, and increase the speed. Again, around 74 hertz. I expect this thing to go like that, okay? The wire is not connected, okay? If it was, it would kill the generator. Uh, I don't want to kill the generator just yet. I'm just looking for the action of it, okay? Also, when I shut down the generator manually, in this case, I expect this uh, arm to automatically retract, all right? Uh, some people don't care to have it retract. They'd rather leave it out, I guess, uh, in the field so that they could, uh, I guess, diagnose the problem. But in order to reset it, they would have to pull off the cover and go in there. I don't want to deal with that. I'd rather just hit the reset button over here. So let's start this uh, generator up and see what happens. Okay, we got about 60 hertz. As you can see, the uh, lever has not popped out. Uh, once again, this is going to be kind of hard because i got to get my camera on everything. I'm going to start increasing the speed, little by little. 65 hertz. There we go, retracts. Okay, if the wire was hooked up and the bell end cover was on all that other junk and jazz, and let's say it did overspeed, I would not have to remove the bell end cover to manually push this back, okay? If, uh, this little stud right here, if I backed it out a, a little bit more, then I would have to do exactly what I just mentioned. In addition to that, I would have to hit the reset button. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the uh, wire on in a moment, and we're going to simulate a full scenario here. Uh, once again, I'm going to fool it by using the idle adjustment screw uh, to think that it's over speeding, okay? And the reason why I'm keeping it at 74 hertz is just in case if, let's say, I'm running a full load and the load cuts out, uh, yeah, the generator may momentarily speed up real quick, okay? If it reaches that threshold just for a moment, it may accidentally, or I should say accidentally, it will shut down the generator rightfully so, but again, it's just going to be a momentary thing. Uh, people on the forum had mentioned that they like to, I guess, set it around 71, 72 hertz. I'm just going to leave it a couple hertz even higher. Uh, as you saw, the voltage was still fine, okay? So it's not like the generator speeding up and, you know, the voltage is increasing proportionally. It's not happening here. Okay, so let me uh, hook up the wire. Give me a moment and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. What I've done, again, I just want to show you I hooked up the wire now so that when this arm extends out, it's going to ground out the system and it will shut down the generator. What I expect to happen is that this light will uh, glow red, okay? And this button's going to pop out a little bit. The generator is going to shut down. When the generator is totally off, the light will still be on and obviously this button's still going to be popped out a little bit. The only way to restart the generator is to push this button in. Again, I don't want to have to deal with uh, manually pushing in the little lever, which means that in Real reality, I would have to pull off the uh, bell cover uh, when it's in operation, okay? So once again, my uh, plan here is to manually increase the speed uh, using the idle set screw until when I achieve about 74, 74 and a half, maybe 75 hertz, okay? So let's see here. Let's see if we could do this. <laughs> which is normal.
bingo okay the thing resets back in i don't have to worry about dealing with that when the cover's on and uh i, I know i got the uh, camera light on so it's kind of hard to see this thing here but it is illuminated before i uh actually back down the speed and all that with this uh circuit still tripped let me uh once again demonstrate what happens if i try starting it's going to try to start but it's going to cut out here we go See that? Whoop. I'm grinding this start because I'm still holding this button right here. But you'll see. Cuts out, okay? I don't want to grind the starter, so I'm releasing the switch. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now again, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn down the speed, we're gonna start it back up. And of course I reset that. That's cool right there. Okay, I'm gonna have to fine-tune this a little bit better, okay, to get it down to uh, normal operating range, but I'm gonna start it back up. I know I'm gonna be below 74 Hertz. Here we go. the uh, bell end cover tin back on bolted no problem everything disconnected for right now because we have a holiday weekend coming up gotta start planning for the picnics and whatnot basically the rebuild is more or less complete however there's a couple things I need to do before I could say the uh, rebuild is complete and successful uh, as you know I ran it off propane it'll run off natural gas too with minor adjustment but I want to try running off gasoline okay this is a, a tri-fuel carburetor which uh, is a good desirable option so I could run uh, gasoline gas uh, such as natural gas and propane and whatnot uh, I need to fine-tune the carburetor a little bit better I mean it runs fine once it's going it's a little hard to start or harder than uh, what I expect to start Again, I really didn't play around with any adjustments on the, on the carburetor. So, because uh, I was mainly focusing on the uh, start problem with the overspeed uh, switch and whatnot. But once I get this thing tuned up as far as the carburetor for uh, gasoline and minor adjustments for gaseous fuels, I think the project will be complete. Okay, I did load this thing up to 28, oh, a little over 20 amps per leg. Uh, the boxes that I'm using external to the generator have 20 amp breakers in them, so really I'm not going to be able to pull 30 amps, uh, which this will do per leg, okay? I do have a main breaker on this uh, panel right here. It's hard to see, okay? This little switch right here, uh, that is a double pull breaker, 30 amp breaker. Uh, 
So anyway, I like to run this thing full max. Also, I want to be able to uh, run this thing for an extended period of time to break in the uh, rings because they really weren't broken in too well, I guess, to begin with. Uh, I don't see any glazing on the cylinders, okay, when I took it apart. Uh, everything was fine, just a little bit of oil coming up because, again, I think that this generator was put into service and ran for short durations with no load, and that's not the proper way to break these things in. Uh, this thing did live its life in a school, operating in emergency lighting, uh, three phase, and uh, that was about it. I don't know when it was taken out of service, but nonetheless, we bought it, and here it is uh, in like new condition. After this project, I'm not sure what I'm going to tackle. Maybe uh, get a diesel, who knows. But anyway, we still got more work to do on this. Uh, at least we resolved the issue with the overspeed uh, switch. Didn't really expect it to cause that much controversy on the forum, but it did. But you know something? The discussion is very, very entertaining, I guess you could say. I think we all learned something. I know I did. Anyway, if you have any comments, please uh, let me know on the forum. Thank you.